Spiky bits. Well, here it is, folks. The big uh, expansion that's driving a wedge through the community. Everybody seems to be either for or against this uh, this new expansion. It's uh, just kind of hit, and it's uh, <laughs> it's it's definitely something everybody's talking about. That's for sure. So the 40k escalation uh, expansion for uh, for the game has just released, and of course, just like it said, <laughs> rules for uh, using uh, field and super heavies in 40k are now here. And uh, who knows if the game's ever going to be the same? Uh, I guess uh, we we had uh, Reese on the podcast, the Forge uh, Forge Narrative podcast, the other night, and uh, I guess his GT, uh, the uh, Vegas Open GT, will be the first one to decide to have the final say in this. I, I guess, and we'll we're all on the fence to see uh, see how all the uh, tournament organizers rule this thing. It's going to be very interesting, nonetheless. Uh, I was hoping for a little bit more balance personally, but it does not look like that is the case. So this is uh, this is the escalation uh, escalation book here, and uh, flip open to the first uh, first couple. The standard uh, basically it's a standard expansion, about a hundred page, uh, give or take ninety six. I don't think these page numbers are actually right because that is not the right page number. I know that for a fact. I, I didn't go through and check them all, but uh, let's talk about a few things first. Of course, you can kind of see here you got the in intro. Uh, you know, just a little uh, fluff section. Then you've got the rules themselves where it goes into explaining uh, how super heavy vehicles, walkers, flyers, gargantuan creatures, and flying gargantuan creatures, plus the apocalyptic weapons themselves work. And much to the chagrin of a lot of people, uh, <laughs> they didn't change anything from Apocalypse. The D weapons still work the same, stomp attacks, everything, everything that came out in July is in this book. And according to this book, it is... Uh, Oh, wow, that's annoying. It is legal for 40k, so it's going to be very interesting to see what sorts out from that. Here is the uh, this the showcase is definitely uh, definitely nice, and there's some new pieces of art in here as well. I'll, I'll kind of show you. The Lord of War data sheet section is ginormous. It takes up the majority of the book, which is nice for for rules for a change. And there's some Alta of War missions and the Gauntlet Challenge missions, which is just primarily for uh, super heavy versus super heavy, or just going specifically playing against the super heavy with an opposing force of uh, 40k models. It was very interesting stuff. Um, okay, so back to here, the Lord of War uh, data sheet, of course. Lord of War being, uh, I guess it, it got its beginnings in the Horus Heresy novels, or excuse me, Horus Heresy books from Forge World. So Lords, and then they uh, kind of uh, took it over to Apocalypse as well too. So we've got we've got that designation, and what that does is it basically is a new slot on the Force Organization chart next to uh, Fortifications. It's an optional, but you can take it according to this uh, this supplement here as a, as an optional detachment. Now, if you do take a Lord of War, it's it's very interesting. Your opponent gets a whole bunch of benefits. They get uh, plus one to seize against you, and they also get one victory point for every three hull points or a quote-unquote structure point if you've been playing uh, with super heavy vehicles for a long time that uh, you know damage that they do so that's interesting and also there's a separate warlord traits table for for an opposing force that's that's facing a super heavy so if you're feeling the super heavy your opponent can actually roll, roll on a separate table a separate warlord traits table and maybe get some stuff that benefits them <laughs> against your uh, Lord of War, which is which is pretty interesting. Uh, there is also no points restriction for these things. You just fill the slot. Any points, you could. I guess you could take a thousand point. I guess there isn't a thousand point one in here, but I, I guess you could uh, if they come out with supplements in the future. But that that was really interesting. That that blew my mind there. And we'll get to the. We'll take a look at this first real quick. I wanted to talk about some of the missions. So uh, obviously the showcase, very cool stuff. And then you've got the normal rules that you, I'm sure you recognize all these if you flip through the Apocalypse book itself are already in there. So then we get to the Lord of War data sheets, which, like I said, the uh, the page number was actually off by two on the uh, on the index there, which was interesting. Here's the Lord of War or the Escalation Warlord traits chart that your opponent uh, would actually be be eligible for rolling on if they faced if they faced you and you're uh, fielding a Lord of War here, which. I guess it's fair. You know, it's kind of like the uh, the old armor company rules for uh, Imperial Guard. If any of you remember that, they used to have this thing where you could uh, <laughs> you could actually take out a a super heavy like one of the tanks or whatever if you rolled like a six to a six for armor pen like auto did something to it to, to try to balance the fact that you were taking a 
a group of, you know, infantrymen up against, you know, a, a column of tanks, which I guess kind of represented that they wouldn't charge straight at them like idiots. They would do some sort of stuff to try to neutralize and take advantage of side armor, things like that. So that's kind of what that was. Here's the uh, special rules I was talking about where uh, benefits also to your opponent as well for taking these. So it was, it was interesting stuff here. Uh, then if we flip to... Oh, there's one piece of artwork I really wanted to show you. Oh, this one here. Hadn't seen that before. Very interesting stuff. Uh, you know, Necrons. Uh, demons fighting uh, Necrons. Have no idea who's got the upper hand there, but that was pretty cool looking. Lots of lots of cool, inspiring art in here. Definitely to try to get you to uh, to get these uh, get these super heavies on the table. Get these centerpieces built. Here's here's just a sample data sheet. Obviously, f familiar stuff if you've read an Apocalypse book or seen any of this stuff in any of the the supplements. You know, it's pretty much laid out the same. So comforting there. Uh, more cool uh, showcase pieces. There's a Thunderhawk with uh, everybody's favorite little fatties. Uh, some more inspiring uh, artwork as well, which was uh, actually I I was really surprised by this one. I didn't, didn't expect to see that. I'd like to see if somebody's painted up a Shadowhawk, the uh, the the special um, the special Raven Guard uh, Thunderhawk. That I've never even seen one painted up, but that'd be cool if somebody did. The Altar of War missions. There's uh, six of them, so you just kind of roll a d6, and you can if you feel the uh, if you feel the super heavy, you can run these instead of the normal. Uh, Battles in the Age of Darkness that are that are in the um, the 40k rulebook, and then in the back are some really cool some Gauntlet Challenge missions. There's uh, three of them, so obviously roll a d3 to see which one. And then they have some special takes uh, off of the 40k missions themselves, which was really interesting stuff. Uh, I mean, if you're into super heavies and you want to play like smaller games, like 2,000, 3,000 point games, and not like the full-on apocalypse, which is kind of weird because. With all these rules and everything, it seems like full-on apocalypse. Like you don't have, you know, data faxes and, and and formations and stuff. But you you have, I mean, these rules are it's a D weapon. You know, it's just gonna wreck everything. There's no save. It's very uh, kind of weird. And I don't know how familiar some of you are with the super heavy rules themselves, but you know, D weapons basically go through everything except for Elder Titan Hollow Fields, which once you actually punch through. The armor you have to roll to see whether you take out a hologram or the actual vehicle itself, whether you do the damage to that, which is interesting because it's the only quote-unquote rule out there that you actually that actually kind of gets around D weapons, and they put it right in here, and it has four D weapons on it, which I don't get. The pulsars have two each, so I don't know. It's it's easily the most powerful uh, the most powerful super heavy in this book. So I'm not sure how, like, if you go up against a, sh a storm sword, I mean, you're just going to smoke it. Or, you know, a shadow sword or something like that. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how this, this is not balanced. This is not a balanced supplement, you know, uh, at, at all. And it seems, it, I don't know. I, I don't know what they're they're trying to accomplish here. But it's very, it's very fluffy and it's very narrative. But as far as uh, competitive, you know, competitive feel to it, it is completely totally utterly unbalanced there is no balance to this whatsoever so i i don't know i don't know what they hope to accomplish here but here it is and we'll see <laughs> we'll see what happens so definitely post in the comments how you feel about it because there's going to be lots and lots of talk about this supplement for a long long time and i'm sure uh, reese and the faq council uh of, of tournament organizers definitely need all the help they can get to try to try to sort out this mess that we have upon us so that's pretty much it uh, be sure to check out my blog, uh, Spiky Bits, of course, as well as uh, I'm a contributor to a podcast as well, Forge, uh, Forge Narrative. And also, uh, be sure to check out The Boys GT, which uh, will be coming up again uh, next November. But it's a great group of guys, and they always have, they're always very fun loving, and uh, <laughs> they're at almost all the tournaments. So definitely go up and uh, say hi to those guys because they're, uh, they're, they're really nice fellas. And that's it for me. See you next video. Spiky bits.